Okay, so hello folks and welcome to my new recording here. I'm going to be explaining the basics of how to use OBS Classic. If you have a lower specification computer and if you still want to live stream video games. This also works if you want to record your computer screen. It's a free piece of software. I am recording this with a paid piece of software, Movavi Video Studio. Um, I'm just using that. I mean, I greatly prefer open broadcast software, but it's kind of hard to record something you're making a video about to begin with. So I'm going to start this off with OBS is basically a piece of software that allows you to capture your computer screen and also audio and video if you so desire, and then upload it to the internet via various channels, primarily twitch.tv. So we're going to get right into this here. I've put uh, my OBS window in the bottom right hand corner of the screen here. And there's a bunch of different things when you open it up. Firstly, we're going to go over these two areas right here. So this one right here is your microphone. So this captures whatever comes into your microphone. For some of you, it will be a webcam. I advise getting an actual microphone. I have a Audio Technica just sort of directional microphone that I have on a stand right next to my computer. This bar over here is your computer audio. You always want to have it quite a bit lower than your microphone because you want to be able to or you want people to hear what you are saying into your microphone instead of hearing just computer music or computer clicks or r random computer noises. Uh, so you want to keep that pretty low. Okay, scenes is you, just basically like a area where you have predefined settings. So for instance, I have a live streaming setting and a recording setting. I'm in recording right now, so uh, like if I want to make a, a, a recording of like some gameplay and then upload that to YouTube, I go into the recording section. For sources, I use video capture device. With that, I can specify both my webcam and my microphone. So you only need one video capture device for both of them, not one for each. And then I use monitor capture, which basically just captures every single thing on my monitor. Okay, so that's the two basics here. The main important thing you want to remember is what both this microphone thing is and what this system audio is. Also, with the microphone, always keep it at 100%. We're going to be talking about the microphone noise gate in a little bit. So this right here is not the noise gate. Don't worry about that thing. Okay, I'm going to go to settings. In settings, we have general. Uh, there's the English section. And in English, you know, obviously you want your language. Setting profile. I have my recording profile set right now, but I also have streaming. Uh, to basically make something, you just type a, you type the title of your uh, sort of settings profile in there and click add. An interesting thing to note is that nothing that you change in OBS will actually go into effect until you close the OBS program and then restart it. These settings just keep them the way they are. Uh, generally, it comes preset like that. So under encoding, you want X264, CBR. I generally use a max bit rate of 5000 uh, when I'm recording. When you're streaming, you want it to be closer to about 1000, uh, sometimes even as low as like 800. E I mean, here I think it has some, what's it? I think, I think like 3500 is the maximum recommended. But, you know, I generally stream at 1,000 and then record at 5,000. CBR padding, have that on. Everything, just keep it pretty much the way it looks in here. Broadcast settings, so I, you know, obviously don't have, I, I'm just saving it uh, to my computer right now. But if you want, you can select live stream. And then it'll give you the place where you can enter your twitch.tv uh, uh, key, uh, which is basically like your login for Twitch when you're live streaming. For your video, obviously just 
it'll have whatever video card you got. Um, custom, I generally want it to be around 1600 by 900. That is my monitor size, actually, but you know, basically for recording, you want it to be as high as you can, so I have this. But for live streaming, you generally want it also around 1600 by 900, if not 1024 by 768, because you want it to be able to fit on people's uh, computers, even like things like iPads or surfaces. Resolution downscale, I generally go 1.25 for recording even, just because I want it to you know, basically be playable when someone clicks on it. Frames per second always go for 60. I only play older games like Age of Mythology or things like League of Legends, but I still set it on 60 just because it makes a very fluid looking video instead of having one that you can't really look at without kind of being like, oh, I wish that person uh, made a higher frames per second for their recording software. For audio, the desktop audio device, device you want it to be default, it'll just uh, pick whichever thing you generally play music out of. Microphone and auxiliary mic or auxiliary audio device, I have it set to my Audio Technica USB microphone. Um, a lot of you will just have your computer webcam, but for audio, you you basically need to invest in a generally around $15 to $100 microphone or people watching your stream just will, it'll be like their ears will not be happy. And click reinitialize when you plug new things in and it'll show new things. <clears throat> Push to talk, don't worry about that. Most of the time you'll never even need to figure out what that means. Even I, I, I never use it just because it's too much trouble. Desktop boost, uh, just keep put one, mic audio boost one. Um, Hotkeys. Another good thing to remember though is when you change anything, click apply on each setting that you change. Because otherwise, if you click around, change a bunch of settings and only click apply once, it'll only save like that particular item. It's kind of a weird thing with OBS Classic, um, but since OBS Studio does basically does not work right now, I, you will be using OBS Classic. Advanced, use multi-threaded operations, keep this at normal. Set the scene buffering time to 400. A lot of people recommend quite a bit more. Just keep it at 400, that's good. Disable encoding allow modifiers, just basically set all this stuff the way I have it very fast. Encoding profile is main. Keyframe interval is two. This is important. Uh, use CFR. Uh, do not check this thing. Do not check any of this stuff. Um, I'd set this to two though and basically just have all your settings mirror mine. Quick sync encoder. I don't know what this is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, browser I think this is like if you want to have something like donation alerts, like if you're a Twitch streamer, but obviously it's more important for you to figure out how to get your live stream going in the very beginning and you figure this out later because it has things like CSS for like if, like for instance, I have Stream Tip Alerter, which is like from the tip company or that I use. But like you might be using something else, like a lot of people use Nightbot, and I think Nightbot actually uses CSS. Microphone noise gate. This is the number one problem I had. It took me a long time to figure this out, and it's very simple actually. So you'll enable the preview. As you can see now, uh, the noise is jumping around, and... I, I was just being quiet there, and I also was being careful not to, uh, or to just breathe normally. You want to have this setting at the very, sort so above your sort of just breathing and clicking level. I'm just going to click on a keyboard here, um, so I'll just click my mouse here. So you notice how it's right uh, just above the sort of mouse click area. And then set, uh, so that's tw uh, minus 29 dB, 
and then set this one just to minus 28 dp. And I really don't know why this works, but this works. So just do it that way. It will save you so much trouble. Just disable the preview here. And then, you know, obviously to get this whole thing in the first place, you have to just click enable noise gate. Apply when you're done. Scene switcher, don't worry about that. That's not very important unless you get much more into advanced streaming. When you're done, click OK. I'm going to press cancel because I just don't want to save any of the settings that I might have changed. And yeah, that's it. This is OBS Classic. It's fantastic for making recordings of gameplay. It runs super silently in the background. I have it set on hotkeys of F9 to start the recording or start the stream, and then F10 to stop the recording or stop the stream. Works for me. Some people don't have a stop on it just because they don't want to accidentally stop streaming or stop recording partway through a game. But I mean, I never, you know, go even near the F9 or F10 since for the games that I play, it's all in the sort of uh, sort of left-hand side of the keyboard, like League of Legends, uh, sometimes Old School RuneScape, or currently my uh, game Age of Mythology. But yeah, again, thank you for watching this video here. I hope it was helpful to you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Help me out a ton. It will help me so much because I'm, I'm trying to get started in the whole sort of uh, educational videos sort of community. And definitely like this video. Um, I hope, again, that this helped you. And I will see you all back for one of my future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.